The Ashes of Today Are the Sparks of Tomorrow by XX Misery Smiles XX Read by Kind Bed Chapter 17 When they finally made their way down for lunch, Ogawa eyed them with a thoroughly unimpressed look. I take it you guys talk things out? More or less. Hawks quipped, shrugging. Ogawa sighed, pinching the bridge of her nose. And then the reason you guys look like middle school Yakuza thugs? Or is this just supposed to be... She trailed off, just shaking her head, words apparently lost. Dobby laughed. Cool your rocker, Fluffs. It's washable body marker. That doesn't answer my question. Ogawa grumbled, but her lips quirked into something of a smile anyway. At least you two can join us for meals again. Haruka read a study on human Pavlov experiments and their correlation to serial killer demographics or some shit, and I swear to God, she'll explode if she doesn't get to talk about it with someone else. I love her, but honestly, sometimes... Ogawa rubbed at her forehead, soft mint green ears laying back, but the fond smile never left her face. I'm actually something of a serial killer expert, believe it or not. Dobby said slyly, smirking. Personal experience and all that. Ogawa shot him a disgusted look. Just walk behind me and try not to talk too loudly about your secret identity in this busy hospital, if you can manage that. Hawks and Dobby both laughed before meeting each other's eyes, matching grins sliding across each of their faces. They were going to be okay. It took two days for Miracle to return. She was sitting in the waiting room, smirking with her arms crossed, legs up on the coffee table. Hawks had found out from talking to her on the phone that a girl with an incredible reversal quirk had managed to heal her enough to bring back her missing leg, though her arm still was a prosthetic. So, did you get your shit together? She asked, raising an eyebrow. Hawks beamed. Fuck yeah. She whistled, standing up and pumping a fist in the air. Alright, let's go! She punched him in the arm still grinning from ear to ear. I knew you could do it. I even brought my intern to help you celebrate. I sent him to the vending machines to grab a celebratory drinks, she added when Hawks looked around in confusion. Never thought I'd see you taking on an intern, Hawks said a bit surprised, and Miracle scoffed. Oh, trust me, me neither. This one fell into my lap by complete accident. I believe you specifically made an offer to take me on said a voice behind them, and Hawks turned to find himself lost for words. Sharp red eyes looked back at him, precise and calculating. He'd grown taller, definitely taller than Hawks at this point, but he was still the same as ever in the way he spoke and carried himself. Tokoyami? He breathed, not daring to move. Tokoyami nodded. Hawks? Hawks turned to look at Miracle. You... him? Oh, shut up. I'm a great teacher, Miracle said, flicking Hawks' ear and scoffing. Hawks turned back to look at Tokoyami and winced. I'm... I'm sorry. For what? Tokoyami asked, guarded. For not... for not talking to you, Hawks admitted. I... I didn't want you to see me like this, without my wings. His voice cracked on the last note. I see. Tokiyami said softly, then hesitated. Hawks, I do not care about your abilities. Your wings are of little concern to me. You taught me how to fly, and I will forever be indebted to your kindness. You were a wonderful mentor, and I only hope I can succeed you well. Thank you. For everything. He bowed his head, and Hawks let out a faint, delirious laugh. I missed you, buddy. He stepped closer, cautiously. Bird handshake. Hawks asked, reaching out his hand. After a moment, Togiyami took it and slapped it twice before grabbing it and wiggling his fingers in the air as Hawks mirrored him. Miracle's jaw dropped. You have a stupid secret handshake? Her gaze whipped to Togiyami. Traitor! Why didn't you tell me about this? It's a bird handshake, Hawks said, rolling his eyes. You're a rabbit. Hawks! And then Hawks was squeezed tightly by a swath of deep bone crushing blackness. Bone crushing blackness, which was sobbing. Hawks let out a startled laugh, then awkwardly patted dark shadow on her head. Shadow. Apologies. 
Tokoyami said, sighing. She missed you. It's okay, Hawk said, hugging Dark Shadow tightly before Takayami recalled her, forcing her to release him. Great, even the fucking quirk thinks you walk on water. Marco rolled her eyes, and Hawks, aware of his former intern's intense gaze on him, demonstrated the great maturity needed to be a hero by sticking out his tongue back at her. Then, a voice cut in from behind them. Okay, the canned coffee machine is out of order, so you're having to settle for green tea. Don't try and... Then he halted. Hawks turned to see Toby staring with a wide-eyed blank expression, taking in the two new heroes. Then he spun on his heel and quickly walked away. Wait, fuck, Toby! Hawks cried out, lunging forward to grab Toby by the back of his shirt. Toby bristled at the touch, lunging around and hissing like an irate cat. Hawks gently moved his hand down to rest on Toby's forearm, offering a warm smile until his lover calmed down. Tokoyami looked confused, but didn't say a word. Miracle looked like it was Christmas. Oh. My. God. Toby. As in THE Toby. Holy shit, you are hot! Man, I couldn't hear it over the phone. Hawks fucking scored! Dobby was flushed bright red, and Hawks laughed, kissing his cheek. Congrats, Toby. We've got her blessing. Turning back, he gestured. Toby. This is Rumi and Tsukuyomi. Rumi, Suku, this is Toby, my boyfriend. He chirped the last words with a note of glee. Pleased to meet you, Tokoyami said seriously, bowing his head. Call me Tokoyami. What a legend. Mirko thrust out her hand for Toby to awkwardly shake. So stoked to meet you. She turned her head towards Tokoyami. Are you going to tell Hawks about your own little lovebird? She winked, grinning and Tokoyami looked like he might be blushing. I... I don't know if... Tokoyami started, but Marco just barreled on. You're dating the green one, right? The one with the broccoli hair? Tokoyami sighed, seeming resigned to his new fate. No, Midoriya-kun is dating Todoroki-san. I'm dating Suyu. Hugs gasped. The frog girl? Seriously? Dude! He clapped Tokoyami on the shoulder who was slowly trying to disappear under his cloak. Meanwhile, Marco whistled. Ah, oh, right, yeah. Broccoli Kid is with Yumi's younger brother. I knew he was with someone, though. Toby's head snapped up. Yumi? He questioned. My fiancé. Marco sang, winking. The future miss for Yumi Usagiyama. You're coming to our wedding, remember? To pose as her estranged older brother for family photo symmetry. She let out a cackle, and Dobby stood pale as a sheet. Hawks wasn't sure whether to laugh or cry, but settled for giving a weak smile. Great, Dobby muttered absently, looking like he might throw up. Miracle tilted her head. You don't have to if you don't want to. I was like 30% kidding on that one anyway. I just thought Yumi might want someone we trust to be there for her. She sighed, seeming more subdued now brushing a strand of long white hair back behind her long, drooping ears. We helped Ray follow a restraining order against NG after the divorce came through, but it means they both can't be at the wedding. Fuyumi really wants one of her brothers to walk her down the aisle, and Natsu is already going to sit with Ray for support. Her lips quirked up. We tried to get Shoto to do it, but they were dead set on being a bridesmaid. Hawks laughed, and Miracle flashed a brilliant grin. Then she paused and turned to Toby, thoughtful. I just realized you probably have no clue what we're talking about. Sorry, dude. Best way I can put it is, uh, my father-in-law sucks ass. Toby nodded numbly. Right. Then he paused. Hang on. Does Midoriya, the green one, um, does he treat Shoto right? Toby asked, and Miracle frowned, puzzled, taken aback by the odd question. Um... I think so. She turned hesitantly to Tokiyami, who nodded. Midoriya's smile alone is enough to pierce the darkest soul. Todoroki is in good hands. Toby nodded, satisfied. Good. Hawks fought the urge to smack his hand against his forehead, and then slam his forehead into the nearest wall in the hopes it would knock him out and erase his memory of this entire interaction. Sorry, he said, stumbling over his words to cover. He just cares a lot. About people. No, I don't, Toby snapped, and Hawk shot him a 
What the fuck? I was trying to cover for your dumb ass. Look, which called the white-haired villain some. I mean, he bit out. Yeah, I do. So much care. I'm... I'm the original Care Bear. He flashed a weak smile, and a hawk's willed god to smite him on the spot, and preferably as quickly and painlessly as possible. A vaguely confused Tokoyami and Muriko continued to stare at them. Okay, Muriko said slowly, the expression not leaving her face. Tokoyami just grumbled, what a mad banquet of darkness. Chapter 18 So, once Muriko and Tokoyami had finally left, Dabi dragged Hawks to their hideout, sitting down and crossing his arms. Hawks stared at him, surprised to find the anger burning back at him. Dabi's eyes were flaring. Fuyumi Yusagiyama. What the fuck? Hawks waved his hands helplessly. Look, I didn't... It didn't really cross my mind to tell you. I didn't know that Miracle was coming today, and it wasn't exactly like I've had a lot of time to think of you as Toya yet, or what that even means. Dabi physically flinched at the name, and Hawks immediately softened, reaching for his hand. Sorry. I promise I'm trying to understand. It's... It's not something I'm used to. I've never had a family. I don't know what you're thinking or feeling. If you want me to help, I need you to talk to me. Dabi squeezed his eyes shut, nails digging into his arms and leaving red marks. I don't want you to help me, Hawks. I just want you to be here. Can't you just support me? Does it need a fucking reason? Hawks groaned, feeling helpless. I don't even know if you want support, though. I don't know if you're feeling sad or happy or what the fuck you feel right now. I don't want to do something wrong and I hate it because you're the one person in my life who I don't have to walk on eggshells around and if I say the wrong thing, I could lose that. Dobby stared at him, expression unreadable, and Hawks cringed. Was Dobby going to yell at him? He hadn't yelled before. Not in anger, anyway. Hawks didn't mind yelling. It was easy to go numb, to hide in his head. When people yelled at him. No, it was the cold, quiet rage he feared the most. Disappointment. He knew disappointment like he knew his own name. Dabi reached out hesitantly and touched his cheek. Hey, you look scared. Are you... are you okay? His voice was full of worry suddenly, and Hawks felt the panic in his chest melt away. Hawks realized that he didn't know how to handle anger that wasn't... bad. He thought lamely, for lack of a better word. He knew how to de-escalate things when someone was going to hurt him, or how to redirect attention and avoid angry people from seeing him, from making him a target. But this was different, and fuck, Hawks had no idea what to do. He didn't want to tell Toby to calm down. He didn't think Dobby should have to. He didn't want to make Dobby another part of his life he tried to control and regulate so it didn't crumble and turn on him. He couldn't find the words for any of that, though. So he just took a deep breath and put his hand over Toby, feeling the comforting warmth against his skin. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Dabi sighed. I'll tell you. I'll explain in bed. But I just need some time to figure out how I feel. How to explain it. Okay. Hawks whispered, nodding. And Dabi pulled him in close, wrapping an arm over him and looking off into space. Hawks wondered what he saw. He wondered who haunted Dobby's thoughts when he closed his eyes. He knew what, who, haunted his, eyes open, eyes closed, and he was still seeing cool eyes studying him from the dark. Finally, Toby spoke up, voice shaky. Problem is that they've, everyone's moved on. They've mourned me. They've gotten past my death. They're treating me like a ghost, like I'm just an empty hole. It's like... I've been cut out of family photo, not burnt away from the picture altogether. He took a deep breath, shoulders shaking faintly, and his hand gripping tightly onto Hawks's. I'd, I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with them moving on if I was dead. But the thing is that I'm not dead. I'm alive. I have no goddamn clue if they know that, but it doesn't fucking matter. They know that I was alive a year ago. They know I survived, that I've spent all this time away from them, existing. But they aren't going to talk about it, right? Because no one in this goddamn family talks about anything. 
His cheeks were wet, eyes red and blotchy, voice cracked and ragged with frustration. I thought maybe my fight with dad would mean something. That I could die and my family could be all fucked up about it and then things would get better. But no, we don't talk about mom. We don't talk about how Shoto doesn't get metaphors or sarcasm. We don't talk about how Natsu takes dad's shaving razors, even though he has nothing to shave. We don't talk about why Fuyumi knows how to cook dinners for four, even though she's only eight. Or why Shoto doesn't stand in the room if the kettle is on. Or why Toya won't fucking eat anything. He broke off, gasping for air, but still not done with the words pouring out from whatever deep gash in his chest Miracle has slit open earlier. We don't talk about Shoto's black eyes. We don't talk about Toya's burns. We don't talk about how Fuyumi stares at the screen every time Midnight does an interview or when Natsu wakes up screaming. And we don't talk about Toya now. We pretend it never happened. We pretend that it's a shame that Toya couldn't be at the wedding. He would have liked it. Because all they care about is someone that died 15 years ago and who they barely remember. They don't care about me, who I am now, because a tragedy is a more convenient memory for them than a person. And then he was sobbing, loud and angry and broken. And Hux pulled him closer, letting Dobby press his face into Hux's neck to let hot tears soak the front of his hospital-issued shirt. I did all this to make a difference, to try and change something, and now I feel like I don't even exist. Dobby kneeled, shoulders shaking so intensely, Hawks worried he might pass out from stress. You aren't a ghost, Hawks murmured softly, holding him tight. You're alive and you live more than most people ever will. You've been through fucking hell, Dobby, but you fucking survived it. You survived, and I'm so proud of you, hot stuff. You deserve the world. He smoothed back Dobby's hair, looking into his raw eyes and grabbing a tissue to gently wipe his face. If I had wings, I would fly to the sky and pull down the moon and stars for you. And I'd fly into your sun, burn my wings, and then do it all again. Because I love you, and you're the most real thing in my world right now. Dobby kissed him, not earnest and needy. Just a soft, insistent press of lips that only lasted long enough to make Hawks sure Toby felt the same way. What do you want to do, Firefly? He whispered, running his fingers over Dobby's back. Dobby sighed. I want to go back to when I could just burn away all of this. Just douse my feelings in flames and let the anger speak for itself. I don't want to feel all of this all the time. I don't know how to. Dobby whimpered out and Hawks pressed lips to his forehead. You know I'm too selfish to let you do that. Hawks mumbled, and Dobby gave a weak laugh. Of course you are, you bastard. We could have, like, an identity reveal party. Like what Americans do for babies with their genders or whatever. Invite your family and have you burst out of a cake that says, It's your brother on it, Hawks suggested. Toby laughed, cuffing him on the arm playfully. We could stage it like a seance. Get Ogawa roped into it. Make her tell my siblings she can talk to the dead and then call me to speak to them. Hawks covered his mouth, laughing. Oh my god, that's terrible. Wait, what if we made you a social media account and started posting pictures and comments about old memories and then followed them so they'd see it? Just see how long it took? Dobby wheezed, cackling gruffly and shoving at Hawks in an attempt to get back as he slowly died. I love that. Hang on. What if we do it as a musical and invite them? Write a song about how I'm alive and get Janu and Haruka to dance along. Didn't you already basically do that? Hawks asked between giggles, and Dobby fell over. Fuck, I did. Oh my fucking god, I'm iconic. You're so fucking iconic, babe. Hawks managed, flopping onto Dobby's chest and causing the taller man to let out a surprise grunt. After a few half-hearted attempts to shove him off, he gave in letting Hawk stay perched comfortably against his ribs, listening to his heartbeat and throwing out suggestions for the perfect comeback of the year. What about a chain email? But it's just your tragic backstory told through emoji puzzles. 
Send this to 10 people and your brother will appear at Christmas dinner with his boyfriend. And if you don't, then uh, um, their house gets filled with frogs. Frogs? Why frogs? It's threatening. Imagine waking up and just riveting everywhere. Are you scared of frogs? No, why would you think that? Because apparently the worst punishment you can think of is waking up with a bunch of frogs in your house. For other people, I'll have you know my worst nightmare is waking up in a glass maze. A hey, why? I can't see glass, Dobby. You what? I'm a bird. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Stop laughing. I've nearly gotten killed flying into windows. Oh, oh my fucking god. I hate you. I'm so testing this out. Don't you dare. I will absolutely dare. Fuck you. Do it yourself, coward. Oh, you want to kiss me so bad it makes you look... Hawks had to admit, the Todoroki family drama was a lot funnier when it was just watching Natsu and Shoto roast the fuck out of their father while Hawks watched on in amusement. Generational trauma was less fun when it meant watching the person you loved pushed to their lowest by the people who were supposed to raise them. But he still stays. Is it okay if I still talk to Marco? He asked Toby. And Dobby looked confused. Of course, I don't control who you talk to. Hawks waited. Dobby seemed not to pick up on the reason for his hesitance. What? I'm trying to figure out whether you're genuine. Whether this is one of those... Yeah, it's okay, but I'm gonna be mad at you if you actually do it. But I won't tell you that. Hawks explained, and Dobby groaned. I hate that I know exactly what you're talking about. No, I don't fuck with that shit. That's stupid. If I say something, I'm gonna mean it, okay? Yes! Hawks cheered. And Dobby rolled his eyes. He smiled, dancing on his lips. Besides, she's good for you. You need friends who aren't just me and your nurse. Yeah, Hawks admitted. Guess what? She said, next time they were chatting over a call together. Toby having spent most of the day out helping Haruka with her play. As much as Hawks loved them, they couldn't spend every second together without both going insane. And Haruka and Toby made a great duo, unexpected as it was. What? Hawks asked. Miracle was smirking. He could hear it in her voice. They just released the billboard results early. Apparently all the sexual assault and child abuse weren't a good luck on Mr. Frankface over here. So, Hawks' heart rate picked up, not quite believing what she was trying to say. So, who? Hey there, Mr. Number One. Miracle purred, and Hawks didn't know what to do. What? How? I'm not even... You haven't retired, so you're still in the runnings, Marco said nonchalant. That doesn't matter, though. You just made it to the top, dude. Ugh, I'm so fucking proud. I started screaming so loud when I saw it that Kamui thought I was being attacked and tried to tackle me. Hawks laughed at the image and covered his mouth. Oh my god, this is... Then he froze, suddenly feeling like he couldn't breathe. Marco, has the commission said anything? If I go back into hero work... Will they still... Babe, Margo cut him off. The commission is in such hot water right now, they look like boiled lobsters. They have no ground to try and take you back. Honestly, you could probably sue them. Huh? Hawks asked, furrowing his brow. Margo sucked in a breath. They didn't tell you? Fuck. Oh god. Well, strap in for this one. Yeah, so... After the whole scandal with Mick Stableface's hero cancellation video, there was an investigation done into you due to the murder accusations. The commission got real cagey about it, which had the amazing effect of causing a public outcry. Eventually, some commission employee who wasn't too happy with the situation just went ahead and leaked the goddamn files on Twitter, which absolute Chad mood. What a legend. But anyway, the public wasn't super happy about the whole thing. There's a lot of support for you. Hawks stared, breathing coming short. Everything. His whole childhood. They... People knew. They knew who he was. Why? He whispered. I was a fucking brat of a child. Why would people support me? He questioned. Well... 
Merkel said in a tone that read, duh. Hawks, if you found out that someone had tied Tokoyami to a chair when he was seven and put him through torture resistant training, how would you feel? Hawks felt his hackles raise. I'd rip out their fucking throats. There you go then. People don't really like to imagine children being tortured and starved, believe it or not. Hawks let out a huff, settling back down and tapping his talons anxiously against the counter. It'd been nearly two weeks since he last cut them, and they were getting longer. Are they... what's gonna happen? Well, they're going to spend the next few days cleaning up the rest of the protests from last week, Merkel said, a smirk in her tone. Fuyumi Tokayami, Shoto, the Broccoli Kid, and Lower King Explosion Dynamite Murder Boy all came over to make posters. Blasty and Yumi even made muffins to hand out. Shoto threw one at some asshole who was yelling annoying questions at them. I swear, nitroglycerin nightmare looked almost proud. Hugs wiped an imaginary tear from his eye. I can't tell you how proud I am. My little Tokayami, leading a government strike. Is this what being a mom is like? Murgo scoffed. Your standards confuse me. I don't care if you hate the commission or not, but at least be consistent about it so I can take your side. It's too complicated, Hawks admitted, shaking his head. Did they abuse me? Probably. But did they save my life? 100%. Doesn't excuse the whole abuse part, but it sure pays my therapist. You in therapy is almost as good of a pairing as you and Toby. I'm such a fucking fangirl of you and working through your trauma. Seriously. Can you do, like, a fist bump through the phone? Hawks wondered. A rough thump sounded through the speaker, and Hawks winced. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that was more of an ear punch, but I'll take it. What? Bitch, next time be ready! Miracle huffed. Count of three, okay? One, two... They bumped fist against the phone speaker, just as a voice crackled distantly from the other end. What are you... Oh! Marco chirped. Hawks and I are talking. Hawks, say hi! Hi! Hawks trilled, grinning. I get that. The voice continued, closer now. It was softer, feminine. But why were you punching the speaker? Elite hero fist bump tactic. I'll teach show soon, don't worry. Marco replied. Hi, Hawks, the woman finally said. I'm Fuyumi. I think we might have met a few times before. Hawks got the distinct impression he knew a lot more about Fuyumi than he probably should. Some of the things Dobby had said ran through his mind, and he bit his lip hard to keep from accidentally blurting out any of them. Hey, was all he said instead. What's up, Ice Queen? Marco burst out laughing. Fuyumi laughed lightly, full of sunshine. Not much. I just got a call from Shoto panicking about accidentally setting the Valentine's chocolates they got for Izuku on fire. Thankfully, it just seems they melted a bit. By the way, congrats on moving up the billboards. I hope you can make it to the ceremony. Miracle is going to be wearing the prettiest dress. Miracle let out a squeak, and Hulk smiled, just so happy for his friends. Then he paused, an idea striking him. A bad idea. Hesitating, he tried to work out the next words as casually as he could. Hey, your brother's in quirk medicine, right? Natsu? Yeah, we're so proud of him, Fuyumi chirped, joy evident in her tone. Hawk sucked in a breath. Good, cool. Um, uh, can I have his number? I have a question about something. And I thought talking to someone I know I can trust would be better. I'd be happy to. He's coming down from university for the wedding soon, so I could even probably find a way for you two to meet, if you want. No, Hawks blurted out, then flushed, backpedaling rapidly. I mean, just the number is fine. I'll work it out myself. Uh, thanks. Of course. Fiumi slowly read out the numbers, while Hawks thought about whether he was doing a bad thing. Dobby has said he wished he could at least talk to his brother. Well... Only one way to find out. But before he made any more calls, first, he needed to talk to his firefly. Chapter 19 Can I steal away hot stuff here for a bit? Hawks asked, pacing up behind Toby and looping scarred arms around his neck. Dobby tensed, then relaxed as he reached back to scratch Hawks' chin. Sure! Haruka piped up, beaming. She substituted her normal scrubs for a lovely black blouse Loose gray cardigan with a subtle floral pattern and flowy dark pants. 
Her large red glasses were crooked on her nose, and she cut a sweet image with her bashful grin. Hawk smiled gratefully back before tugging his boyfriend to the side of the room. Dobby tilted his head, crossing his arms. What is it, turtle dove? Hawks held out the piece of paper he kept in his pocket, watching as Dobby unfolded it in confusion. What's this? That's Natsu's phone number. Hawks quickly added on. Fiumi butted in when I was talking to Mariko, and I said I wanted his number so I could ask him about a medical thing. I didn't say anything about you. Promise. He held up his hands. You said you wanted to talk to him again. Thought I'd give you the chance. The momentary anger drained away in a second, and he grabbed Hawks' face in his hands, kissing him on the nose. Oh, baby bird. Thank you. This is really nice. He sounded a bit breathless, but excited all the same, and Hawks felt a bit like a puppy who'd done a good trick. He flushed at the praise, keening a bit when Toby chuckled, stroking his neck affectionately. God, you're so fucking cute. It should be illegal how adorable you are. People didn't call Hawks cute, certainly not adorable. He remembered the first time he'd gotten called sexy. He'd been 16 and got in a nasty fight that shredded part of his costume. The next morning, a new sight had snapped up some shots of him standing, abs exposed, pushing his sweaty hair back while the villain was taken away. It was bringing sex back to heroism, kicking ass, and serving it too, according to the gossip blog sharing the story. It's good press his handler had said when he'd complained. Besides, we wouldn't want you looking too baby-faced in Mita's eyes. You aren't a little baby. You're a warrior. She'd poked his cheek, then snorting. Despite what they might think with all your baby fat. Might want to get rid of that if you're gonna end up all over the news. The weight dropped off quick, and if Hawks dropped to the floor as well in the next weeks during training, no one connected the two. He must have made a face, because Dobby poked his cheek, just like his handler. Though, less rough, Hawks noted. Starling, what's up? Just, no one's ever called me cute before. Hawks whispered, dropping his head and flushing at the admission. Dobby snorted. Because they're idiots. You're like a lost kitten on the streets. Hawks had to think that if anyone between the two of them deserved stray cat status, it was definitely Dobby. But he didn't say anything. You think you're gonna call your brother? Hawks questioned. Dobby hummed, considering it. I might, he finally said. I need some time to think it over. If so, maybe you could do it with me? Hawks flushed, caught off guard. Sure, I mean, I will, absolutely, but why? I'm not part of the family. You basically are. I mean, now that you're best friends with my future sister-in-law and dating me. Plus, his cheeks turned pink as he bit out. I feel less anxious when you're around. I mean, I'd say out of the two of us, I'm the fucking pinnacle of self-confidence. But the family things, they freak me out more than they should. You have a pretty freaky family, no offense. Hawks joked. Only a little taken. Dobby replied, though his face was completely free of any annoyance. Only fond gentleness. Then they were broken apart from their soft moment by a clear voice. Hey, Kay! Ogawa was standing in the doorway, lips pursed, and Hawks perked up, tilting his head. Yeah, what? Can you come with me? There's something I'd like your input on. Her tone was careful, and it put Hawks on edge. Toby gave him a questioning look, and Hawks shrugged, pecking him on the cheek before standing to leave. Hawks loped down the hallway after Ogawa, making a few attempts to scrounge details from her but giving up and studying the ceiling as they walked towards his room. Takami-san, Ogawa said when they stopped at the door, and Hawk swallowed. Her using his last name meant this was serious. There's something that Dr. Wu here would like to discuss with you. And then she let him in. Dr. Wu was a muscular Chinese woman, tall and rather unconventional, with faintly translucent green hands. She clutched the clipboard, and was perched on the swivel stool with her laptop open in front of her. She gave Hawks a reassuring smile as she sat. Hello. Kay go talk me, right? Just Kay, please. Hawks said, blushing as he sat down on the bed. All right, Kay. She nodded. How are you doing today? Good. 
Hawk said, thinking over everything that had happened. Dobby always made things feel good. That's wonderful. Wu nodded, then dropped her gaze, seeming to want to get to business. So, Kay, when going over your case, we realize that your quirk is not actually one, but two quirks functionally linked together. A bird mutation quirk, specifically that of a red-tailed hawk and fierce wings, which allowed you to detach and control individual feathers. Is that right? Hawks nodded, wincing. Well, Wu said, pausing to gauge his reactions. Due to how the quirk that took fierce wings operates, it would be reasonable to assume you still possess a mutation. However, some of the scar tissue on your back may be preventing you from fully recovering as of now. She took a deep breath, setting down her clipboard. If we were to put you on heteromorph-specific medication, paired with a specialist who can help reconstruct tissue, there's no reason you wouldn't grow your wings back. You most likely would not be able to detach feathers or control them, and there's a possibility of... Hawks had tuned her out at this point. He could have his wings back. He could have his wings back. He could... He could fly again. Hawks might be able to fly again. Yes, he shouted, not even realizing how desperate he sounded until it was out. Yes, please, please, yes, oh god, please. Wu looked vaguely alarmed, but quickly shifted to warm empathy, smiling. All right, then we can go forwards with the treatment plan. I will warn you. The current estimation for how long it might take to grow your wings back is 6 to 18 months, and the medication could have other effects on your body, possibly. Do you have any other major mutated areas that we should be aware of? Hawks flushed and looked down. My feet, he whispered. Bird feet. Stupid, ugly bird feet. All right. Wu nodded. Do you experience any instinctual behaviors, such as stress gripping, nest building, hormonal fluctuations, etc.? Hawks' cheek burned hotter, and he just nodded, not trusting himself to speak. Well, your feet shouldn't be affected majorly. Just make sure to take care of your talons, as they might experience some accelerated growth. Also be aware of those instinctual behaviors, as they might be enhanced by the medication. Other than that, you're good to go, I think. Wu finished, with Hawks barely listening to most of it. When he left, he felt like he'd spent a week in the room, not ten minutes or so. He ended up making his way back down to the small theater space, taking a seat at the edge and watching Toby and Haruka work. Dabi caught his eye tilting his head in question. Is everything okay? And Hawks flashed a quick smile, which Dobby returned before going back to his work. Hawks appreciated the silent communication they now had. He wondered if it was part of their backgrounds. Hero work and villain work both required good communication. You had to be able to signal to your mission partner, come up with plans on the fly, and sometimes just look at someone and hope they understood what to do with all your heart. Either way, it made it easier in times like this. Eventually, the warm room and comfy beanbag Dabi had shoved him into lulled him away from his thoughts, and Hawks fell asleep. He dreamed about Dabi setting his wings on fire. But this time, they didn't burn. This time, they shone brighter than anything, and Hawks used them to wrap them up in a cocoon of flames, away from the rest of the world, alone together in the middle of a war. It was almost not a nightmare. Chapter 20 Chapter 20 is art made by the author, which I've included in the video, including the art from chapter 4, which I forgot to add in the first video. Chapter 21 Toby had learned another song on the guitar by a Japanese artist named Pinocchio P. Haruka had recommended it to him, and Hux let himself be soothed by the lullaby tones of Dabi's scratchy voice as he practiced. We marvel at the setting sun And love talks more than anyone And we hate every day the new stories That seem so unkind Awful movies have a slapping free And drama sobbing dearly There we are, nothing but lonely souls Even so, you and I are happy Though this world makes us hurt That's definitely an us song. Hawks announced when it was over. And Dobby nodded. I'll add it to the playlist. Oh, that's revolting.
Ogawa said, rolling her eyes in amusement. You two need a room. We have a room. You asked to hang out with us. Yes, and I'm regretting it. She replied, leaning over to steal a pocky stick from Hawks, which he had stolen seconds earlier from Dobby. Guess what? Hawks said, remembering suddenly what had happened earlier that morning. The billboards just got updated. You'll never guess who the new number one hero is. Dobby looked up and then groaned. Oh my fucking... Don't tell me. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that it's you, isn't it? Ogawa guessed, grinning, and Hawks nodded. Hell yeah, it is. Like you needed that ego boost. Dobby grumbled, and Hawks cuffed him on the arm. You're proud of me. Admit it. Am I? Dobby challenged, and Hawks smirked. I stole the throne from your dad. Dobby sighed. I'm so fucking proud of you. Now don't make me say that again. Hawks smiled, leaning into Dobby's side. Do you think you'll go back into your old work? Haruka asked, looking up from the scarf she'd been knitting, and Hawks felt the tension flood back into his body. I... I should, especially with my wings growing back and all. Hawks said hesitantly, and Dobby touched his shoulder, meeting his gaze with smoldering blue eyes. The question isn't if you should, it's if you want to. I... Hawks' tongue felt stuck to the roof of his mouth, his throat coated in honey. It's my job, though. You told me you wanted a world where heroes could be bored, Dobby said, tucking a strand of hair behind his ear. But if I quit, I won't be a hero. I'll just be a regular guy. Hawks protested. That's bullshit, Dobby argued. People will always see you as a hero, just like All Might or whatever. I'm sure if you wanted to, you could find work somewhere, without having to risk your life. Hawks bit his lip, then looked down. I always... I really liked working with Tokoyami. I think I might like to be a teacher, or someone that helps people. I want to help people still. I want to help kids. Make sure they're okay. Dobby smirked. See, you're so goddamn heroic, no one would ever think you were some normal guy. He kissed Hawks' cheek, lips warm and soft. I kinda want to maybe become a court counselor, if I ever can. He flushed faintly. It's really dumb, but I just kinda like the thought of working with weirdos like Toga and Shiggy, helping them figure out how to deal with their quirks. That way we don't end up with more people like Toga or Shiggy actually out on the streets. Hugs covered his mouth. Dobby, that's amazing. You do so great at that. I'd absolutely support you trying to do that. He threw his arms around Dobby's neck, and Dobby froze before hugging him back. Then he paused. Hang on, wings growing back? Hawks released him, rubbing sheepishly at the back of his neck. Oh yeah, forgot to tell you. Um, I'm gonna go on meds that might allow me to regrow my feathers. I won't be able to actually control them anymore, but I'll be able to fly, most likely. Dobby's mouth dropped. Then he grabbed Hawks' face and kissed him on the mouth, while Ogawa made a noise of mock disgust, and Haruka squealed. This is going to make playing the game so much more fun. He then said, cackling, and Hawks glared. Dabi's new favorite activity was inserting himself into a group and then proceeding to make some offhanded comment about pro-hero Hawks before waiting to see who responded. So far, the worst incident had been when Dobby sat down at Haruka's bracelet-making workshop and got out the words, I don't really care about the top 10 heroes, but Hawks can definitely choke on all top 10 inches of might. Before Hawks clapped a hand over his mouth and tried to carry him out of the room over his shoulder. It hadn't been very effective and had ended up with both of them falling over onto the floor, batting at each other until Ogawa threw a marker at them. So yes, the game was not something Hawks enjoyed playing. If you do that, I'll divorce you, Hawks announced, crossing his arms. Divorce me? Is this a proposal then? Dobby asked, humming. Yes, I'll marry you just so I can divorce you, Hawks told him. Seems like a lot of work just to prove a point. Dobby purred, smirking. Hawks huffed. You're a lot of work. You're the one who showed up to the job interview, bastard. Dobby argued. This is all on you. What am I even getting paid for this? Hawks asked, 
crossing his arms and raising an eyebrow as Dobby let his head drop into Hawks' lap. Or is this just unpaid labor? Seems pretty unfair to me. You get to have one of Japan's most wanted supervillains willing to do anything to see you smile. Dobby declared, and it worked, because Hogs felt himself smile as his cheeks flushed. Aww, Haruka said, clutching at her chest. Come on, Mickey, aren't they just adorable? I don't know what we were thinking letting this happen. Ogawa shook her head, sighing. Haruka pouted. I think they're cute. You're cute. Ogawa shot back, and Haruka beamed, tilting her head. Aww, see guys, she's a total sweetie. Ogawa rolled her eyes, but didn't reply, instead ruffling Haruka's dark hair with a hand and letting out a <coughs> sound that was particularly cat-like. Hogs realized with a jolt that right now, these were his best friends. Two nurses, a hero, and a supervillain, sitting together, chatting and cracking jokes, playing guitar and discussing their favorite songs and movies. He realized he wouldn't have it any other way.